Thank you for joining our Get Your Onboarding on Track webinar. This is to help simplify and streamline the new hires and user access with SharePoint and Office 365 from Crow Canyon. Okay, I am Scott Restivo, President and CEO of Crow Canyon Software. Crow Canyon is the leader in business applications for SharePoint and Office 365. We've been around for 18 years. We have extensive experience in business application development. We have been doing business applications on SharePoint and Office 365 for over 10 years now. We have offices in California, Rhode Island, and India, thousands and thousands of customers worldwide, and we're very active in the SharePoint and Office 365 community. We have a number of shows coming up in April, the one in Austin, SB Tech, the one in DC, SharePoint Fest, and I go around and quite often give us uh, talks and sessions during these, uh, during these um, SharePoint Saturdays or SB Tech Cons or SharePoint Fest. So we're quite active in that community and quite involved in the business application development for SharePoint and Office 365. We have a number of applications that run in SharePoint and Office 365, help desk, asset management, customer service, facilities, and more. And these are designed to help improve productivity and efficiency in your organization using the SharePoint and Office 365 platform. We have other ones such as security access requests, onboarding, which we'll cover today, compliance, document management, marketing materials. So it covers a wide range of business processes and capabilities. And uh, it's interesting to see how you can use SharePoint and Office 365 to provide that kind of application and productivity gains that are there inherent in the platform but have to be realized through an application that's put together. We do also do a number of custom projects, whether it's for a large electricity generator, insurance companies, the government, military, a number of people come to us, universities, they come to us and we do projects that involve more extensive development than our baseline programs. Now what we have developed over the years here at Crow Canyon is what we call the Nitro Application Service Layer. This Nitro Application Service Layer is an enhanced mint of SharePoint and Office 365 to provide the true capabilities needed to produce applications and custom development projects. We have a SharePoint on-premises based version of Nitro that we use for those kind of those SharePoint on-premises applications and we have Office 365 apps and add-ins uh, set of application service layer that we use for working within the Office 365 environment. But they both utilize the same concept here of these three areas of functionality which what we call the three pillars of application design. Now this is a whole session I go into sometimes at the shows and I will not go into that here. We do have some recordings online and other places you can access this information. But just briefly, we focus on making the UI UX as engaging and interesting as possible for the end users so that they have ability to go in and provide engagement with the application either through portals, through forms manager, and other processes. We, have, we also focus on workflow and business processes in order to automate and streamline the process of the business, uh, whatever the business process is that's going on and make it your, your job easier and things work more, more, more better, to use the words. And reporting, it gives you the ability to see some of the bottlenecks and some of the issues that go on and then able to enact a continuous cycle of improvement. And then what you're seeing here below it are some of the actual tools such as a forms manager, a custom columns, portals, workspaces, in the workflow, there's workflow manager, alerting, a, a long list. And as I said, I won't go into this too much today because we want to focus on the onboarding and HR aspects of these applications. But just to let you know that our applications are all underlaid by this application design process and this Nitro application service layer. And that's what informs the UI UX, that's what informs the workflows and processes, and that's what informs reporting and analytics in order to drive efficiency and productivity as we've been doing through for numerous organizations, thousands of organizations over the years, the nearly 20 years we've been in business throughout the world. So that's a little brief uh, synopsis perhaps of Crow Canyon and where we come from as far as the application development and how we're doing that in SharePoint and Office 365. Now we have a set of solutions for HR using SharePoint or Office 365 either one for HR purposes. Now at this point, we do have a, I did want to pop up a poll 
we do have this ability in the GoToWebinar to ask questions. And one of the questions I want to ask is what version of SharePoint and Office 365 you're using. So if you don't mind taking, uh, you know, maybe 20, 30 seconds, we'll go into that poll and then we'll launch into the solutions for Office 365. Okay, it looks like most of the people have voted by now, voted or selected a selection there. So I'll close that out so we can continue and then uh, show the results on the screen. And it seems like a large majority, well, 40% are in Office 365 and the rest are uh, about the same amount, maybe 50% or so are still in SharePoint, are in SharePoint. Our applications work in either, either environment, whether it's Office 365 or the SharePoint on-premises 2010, 2013, 2016. Okay, good, thank you for doing that, and we'll move back to the uh, screen, and here we go with the solutions for HR that we have. So these are Crow Canyon solutions, we have a number of them, uh, onboarding, user access requests, HR requests, policy management, departmental portal for HR, forms and contracts. Today, though, we'll focus on onboarding, achieving new hire success, because onboarding is something that needs to work smoothly to engage users and bring them on, new employees, and bring them on so they can get to get in, embedded in the company, integrated with the environment, and start contributing to the to the uh, organization's success. Now, these quotes here I got from the Society for Human Resource Management and onboarding employees maximizing success. I think the bottom one is really where we're coming from with this application is that the faster new hires feel welcome and prepared for their jobs, the faster they'll be able to successfully contribute to the firm's mission. And this is important because if employees feel like things are disorganized or they can't, they don't have access to the systems they need to or they don't have the equipment or things are just not set up for them, this is not only going to sour their initial experience with the organization, but also it's going to detract from the eff effectiveness of the firms uh, to accomplish its goals and be efficient and productive. So what we want to do here is provide an onboarding application that will help contribute to the success of the new hires come on, coming on board. So you, one question might be, do you want it, why don't we just use SharePoint tasks? Uh, if you're going to use SharePoint or Office 365, why not just use simple tasks? Well, that's only really in the simplest situations where that would apply. It's really not something you would do for most organizations due to the nature of onboarding and the complexity of the interrelating systems that are involved in the onboarding process. So here's a very simple workflow which is obviously ridiculously simple. If you have that simple a workflow to onboard someone, congratulations, and uh, you probably could use the SharePoint task, but most are more on the level of complex operations involving multi-steps and multiple people involved. These are some examples of, of onboarding processes that we've run into involving multiple, you know, multiple things happening in conjunction with each other. And I'll just run through a few of those. Some get even more complex. You might recognize some of these if you have this considered onboarding in your in your organization. I mean, similar ones, not these exact ones, but similar ones that might have uh, be there. And it's good to set up the workflow and the map the process out like this, so then you can implement it into the workflows and diagrams in our in our application. So here we go, and just a lot of different examples there. So the point is that onboarding is a multifaceted operation, as you well know, if you're involved in it at all. Uh, it must be, the application must be flexible and adaptable because every organization is different, has unique needs, has unique onboarding and user access needs. There's different applications you are going to use in your organization, different workers, roles, locations. You might have one office, you might have many offices throughout the whole country or the world. You could be subject to regulatory requirements, their size, industry, all these make a difference as far as the uh, onboarding and user access application goes. So. Every is one person, one uh, that Society for Human Resources Management calls it onboarding an idiosyncratic process. So, and I think that's quite right. That is very particular to the organization, and we build our application to be flexible and able to adapt to your particular needs of your organization. We also have this concept of midboarding, which is when an employee changes jobs or roles in a company. This is changing maybe from um, sales executive to sales account manager to director of sales or something. It also always involves, often involves changing of access rights, new equipment, office moves, training, certifications. These kind of things can be managed inside the onboarding application. We're calling it onboarding but real, and user access requests. It really encompasses not only onboarding, also this 
term we came up with called mid-boarding, which means changing positions in a company or changing the rights of someone when they're within a position, and then off-boarding, when, whether termination, layoffs, or the person just leaves the company, very seriously you have to retract those access rights and, count, and deal with it, especially in, if you're in a regulatory environment. So all those are all encompassed by our onboarding application. So as we said, onboarding and offboarding is a multi-department activity involving numerous departments interacting with each other and making sure that the employee is successfully brought on board. It involves not only multiple departments, multiple players, so these people have to be assigned tasks and see that they're accomplished uh, successfully in order for the whole process to be successful. We include user access requests in this because this is an intimate part of onboarding, midboarding, or offboarding, is that user access is required to bring the employee on board or change the position or offboarding. This is it happens whether you're hiring, changing positions or terminations, there's granting access to systems, modifying access, removing access. So this is very much embedded in our onboarding program so that these rights can be managed, these permissions to different systems as part of the, the processing. So there's also uh, industries we deal with quite often that have compliance and regulatory rules that are very strict. I mean, they go, uh, there's a gradient from sort of loose to very, very strict as far as what requirements are there when you bring someone on board and what, you, what access to what systems, especially true in the power generators and the electricity world, electri electricity generators where they have to have certifications and personal risk assessments and certain kind of training before they can uh, go on and take you know, control of the, the uh, electricity grid. You know, Homer Simpson in the nuclear power plant, I always think of if he got the, the uh, proper training and certifications to run the nuclear power plant, uh, but that's just one example. So user access management, you could be subject to inspections, audits, government regulations, industry standards, so you really want to keep track of who has access to what, who granted it, and ma manage that quite well. And you have to consider, are these part of your user access management system, policies, documentation, act, reports of access activity, all these things. Now, some people may, some of you may not have that level of need in user access management. I just wanted to bring it up that there are industries that are subject to regulatory and compliance requirements, as well as ISO uh, regulations in, in terms of getting the certification from that to prove that this person in the factory has been trained properly on how to do that procedure and has the right rights to the right uh, equipment and been trained on it, certified on it, et cetera. So that's all there. Basically keeping track of who, when, what, why of this user access. So that's just part of the onboarding uh, system. So now we're going to go into a demo in a moment, but I wanted to pop up another poll, and, and I, I, I swear it's the last one, and just to see what version you're using, what are you using for onboarding now, and then if we can get that another 30 seconds or so, we'll move right into the demo, and thank you. Okay, we'll go ahead and close that and share it. And now it'll be interesting to see these poll results. A lot, almost over two-thirds are on paper forms and spreadsheets. And if you are, it's time to move to some kind of organized system, I think. Uh, we have a lot, not only in the onboarding, but our also help desk and other programs that we do, asset management, for example, equipment tracking. People are still on paper forms and emails and spreadsheets, and they it's just convenient, easy to do. Uh, in some ways, but it has so many limitations and so much problems are up here of trying to, in terms of collaboration and sharing information and smoothing and streamlining the process when you do that. If you're on Office 365 or SharePoint, you're really ripe to move into some more organized system for onboarding, if, if not that, just onboarding, but other processes in, within your company. So let's, let's move on to the demo and show you, show you what we've got here. So back here. Now I'm going to show you a few screenshots, then we'll launch into the actual program itself. In our onboarding and user access management program, we give a dashboard of who's being hired or offboarded, onboarding, change requests, you know, change access requests, and what their status is. You can drill down into each person. Uh, you can see details about what activities are associated with that process or that activity of offboarding or onboarding someone. We have many different. We have three different types of requests: new hire, change request, which means access change, departing staff request, termination or layoff, or some reason they're leaving the company. 
We have an admin dashboard that helps manage the many, many tasks going on inside a, the multifaceted onboarding or offboarding or access change process. We have a set of configuration options that will provide ability to tweak and, and set, up the, set up the application to exactly your specifications. So that's enough on the uh, screenshots. Let's see the actual program itself. So let me get over there. Oh, here we are. Okay, now I'm showing a screen of a live a program that we have in place. This is SharePoint 2013 on-premises, but the same, uh, same program applies to Office 365. So here we have some dashboard or management dashboard, and we're seeing that there are numerous people, numerous activities going on. We have what status they are, uh, with some progress bar. If we look at the individual item itself, expand that out, you can see that there's a number of act tasks that are associated with this overall activity of the offboarding or whether it's onboarding or whatever. We can see what department manager, the status, uh, last date. Well, this is a demo, so the last date already passed. Normally, this might be you know, March 29th instead, but it's a demo, so uh, we didn't update, I, I guess, that, but normally this would have been completed by January 29th. So here we have a number of tasks that are associated with it, Active Directory tasks, which means removing perhaps their account, finance, taking care of some payroll issues, whatever is involved, you remove an access to these applications, HR tasks, and so we can drill down if we have to, if you are interested, into each one as need be to see what that individual task has. Uh, gone on, who it's assigned to, and, and the, the uh, due date, and you know information that's de in detail about that particular task. So you have this comprehensive, you know, this overall view, and then the drill down ability to go in and see that person. Now in this screen, you can also sort by onboarding change and offboarding requests. Here's all the onboarding ones. You also can sort by department, and also by status here. So now we're looking at all the onboarding ones. Here's one that also has that same model where there's an approval task. And uh, so that's one way to look at the information here in this, in this program. Now, one point I want to make here uh, uh, that it has, should be emphasized is that this program, this demo is one particular expression or manifestation of this program. We have a number of capabilities and configurations under the covers of this involved in that Nitro application layer that I talked about earlier that will configure this to be precisely what you need for your organization, how you set up the workflow. Your, every organization is different. There's that idiosyncratic nature of onboarding, so our application can be configured to do different processes based on your requirements there in your organization. It could be a different set of tasks. A different order. It could be a requiring approval or not requiring approval. It could be this person involved or that. There may not be a finance task, or there may be other kinds of tasks that are involved that we can set up and put into the program as according to your needs. So it's quite a flexible and capable program, and we present it in a good interface so that you can see what's going on here and get statistics and insight into how this onboarding or offboarding or user management user access management is progressing along. Here we have a quick launch of that this is this is SharePoint, but we made this quick launch or Office 365 and what we call the modern quick launch. So you have a number of options here to choose from. A new hire, change, departing. There's also the admin dashboard. I'll go into new hire request in a moment. Let's switch over and look at the admin dashboard. So the admin dashboard is another good management feature we feel that you're seeing overall progress, you're looking at all the different tasks involved and how they are progressing. You can see the individual tasks, all onboarding, all offboarding tasks. You can sort and filter by this, this, uh, this list here. You can sort and filter and see which tasks you know, might be applied to your particular role, whether you're overall overseer of the onboarding process or you're taking one particular role in it. You can see what part is applicable here, what tasks are out there, who's being, who's in progress, what the status is. So we try and give that very comprehensive view within this onboarding application. What we can do next is also there's a view of my tasks. These are tasks that are assigned to me specifically, you know, the logged in user, which happens to be Crow admin right here, but the logged in user has tasks. You can see 
what, this is, oh, this is a new hire request. We'll go into that in a moment. There's also a lot of configuration behind the scenes as far as what applications apply, what applications are in use in your company, and what permissions levels they are, and who has access to those. You can configure lists, departments, roles. So all that can be set up quite easily in this utility. We also can work with you to design some of the back-end workflow manager and other configuration elements to adapt to your process. So let's go look at what everyone seems to want to see in a demo, which is how do you do a new request? So get to it. Okay. So we now have a, a new person who, a person who's getting hired, Susan Harwood, just some name I made up. So there, it, hope no one's named that there. <laughs> I just made up that name. And then we have a department IT network administrator, and I'm the manager, and we can decide if the person is is going to be in the office remote. You can have a whole set of work locations. Any of these drop lists, any of these fields can be easily modified using SharePoint or Office 365 to have the particular fields and the specific fields you need in your organization on this. This is, again, just a generic demo that we put together. Uh, and I want to make that point again, I hope I don't beat it to death too much, that this is highly configurable and customizable to your idiosyncratic or particular process, both through the utilities provided in configuration and what we can do in the workflow manager uh, behind the scenes, part of our application service layer. So, look, so when a person is in all, chooses remote, you may want to pop up other information such as what's their mailing address or where they can be located. So we have this dynamic capability inside our, our program and we can determine what fields should show or not show depending on what selections made in other fields. This dynamic forms is very much part of this as well as the tab form at the top here. You have different uh, tabs and different fields showing up depending on what is selected below. Okay, so now we have an IT network administrator, manager here, working in the office, regular full-time, it's not a returning, is re relocation required, probably not, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Now, when we chose IT and network administrator, it automatically chose certain applications in the back end that are applied to this particular role of network administrator. And these, all these are just, again, examples, and it would be set up normally according to your applications and what roles they are, and it would apply to, I mean, what permissions are possible in that application and what roles they apply to. That's fairly simple setup. Once it's set up, then you come in and say, okay, we normally give IT help desk, and, you know, these different rights to the person, and then we could add a few more on. We want to have PeopleSoft read or Salesforce contribute, you know, whatever we want to do there according to your needs, and then we're going to send this in to start the process of, of onboarding this person. So then we would save it, and it becomes uh, a record. People, people get informed as to what is the, uh, you know, whoever needs to be alerted or informed that this new hire is coming into place would be informed by email through our alerting and notification tool that Susan Harwood is joining the IT department, and uh, that's that you may have some tasks assigned to you in order to move that along to to successful onboarding completion. Let's refresh this. You can see her right there in the middle, Susan Harwood, pending at Active Directory. So her status is that she was, you know, the, the new hire process was started. Now, what we can also add in here is that who's creating this request at the begin with? It could be a HR person who just says, oh, Susan was hired, I'll fill it out. Then I'll send it to the IT manager and the manager has to approve the applications or make changes to that application list. It might be sent over there with just the default ones for network administrator, and the IT manager might want to add on some ad hoc ones. So that would go through that process of approval or review before it started creating these tasks. So there's, there's ways we can do more, uh, more of an involved approval process of the new hire coming in. And same with the changing of access and the offboarding is that it depends on your process. It could be started simply HR, we hired somebody, HR is telling you know, IT that we hired somebody and then that manager says, okay, let me look at it and he or she will review that and then approve the, uh, the applications and access and, and uh, put other notes about what's required before it moves on to the actual task generation. So now we have Susan here pending at Active Directory. Well, what we have is tasks dependent on each other, so you cannot create user access until you have the Active Directory account in place. So the first thing would be to create the Active Directory account, 
and then then the other tasks that are dependent on that Active Directory being in place would would then uh, be generated and part of Susan Harwood's record right here. So this has been signed to James, and he's going to create, say he went to Active Directory and created it's Susan dot. Oh, I see. I see. We don't actually have this in the Active Directory, Susan Harwood. I have to go to Active Directory and, and create it in order to. Uh, accomplish this task. So let me just use some other name like my name or something. Yeah, I guess I could go to Active Directory and uh, put her name in. That would take a little bit of time, but imagine I did. It's not that hard, actually, if you guys don't mind. I don't know if anybody is. This is now I'm performing the task that I'm supposed to perform here as the, uh, you know, James, James got assigned this task. So he has this task of of going in and uh, creating this task. So this task would be done. And the onboarding people would not do this task. The onboarding people would be, uh, they'd be assigned this task. James would run over here and do this task of creating uh, creating Susan Harwood in the Active Directory. So just to move things along, I'll go here and do that. Active Directory Users and Computers. And we'll create a new user. And we'll create it uh, action new uh, user and called Susan Harwood. Susan Harwood. Okay, I just put it here. Susan dot Harwood. Okay, has just joined this company. A password. Um, has to put a password in here. Okay, I'll just put something in that's real bizarre and complicated. Okay, let's put it in here. See if that works. Finish. Yay, she's in there. Okay. So now, uh, if it's if it's gonna, there it is, Susan Harwood. So she was created in Active Directory. I can save it. I, you know, sorry to take a little time to do that, but if I use my name, it would look a little strange to say, well, why is Susan Harwood called Scott Restivo? That doesn't make any sense. So, so just to make it more sensible. So that's what happened. The new hire request came in. James Restivo was given this task of creating the Active Directory user Susan Harwood. I replicated him doing that just a moment ago, and now we have Susan Harwood created in our Active Directory, and that task is completed, so the other task can be generated right now uh, here. I have to mark this complete. I guess I didn't do that. So mark it complete, and then uh, it will be done. We know it's there, and the other task will be generated out of that uh, once it's completed. Okay, so we now have Susan Harwood moving along. See, pending at access task, she's no longer pending at at uh, Active Directory. She's now at access. So once the Active Directory task was done, it now generated all these capability, all these other tasks that need to be done, such as giving her access to all those applications we determined, and those again are assigned to different people and what other HR tasks, facilities tasks, hardware tasks. So let's look at some of the tasks that now have to be done in order to complete her onboarding successfully. So in this case, we are looking at HR tasks. Was W-4 submitted, I-9 submitted, insurance form. And this can be completely customized to whatever HR tasks are required in your organization. Uh, if that's, that's, you know, you mark them done when they're done. Hardware tasks, again, another task that can be completely customized to your organization. Does she have all this equipment, access card, uh, you know, completed, laptop, cell phone, whatever you think is the proper hardware task would be there. And then when that's completed, it would go from not started to completed. And then her role would move along into the, uh, you know, more and more along the progress bar. So I hope that gives you a sense of what can be done with onboarding. Uh, I don't think I will go into proving every one of these, you know, tasks. I just wanted to get the Active Directory one so we could show the initiation of the other ones once the other ones are done uh, there. So then we go over here. So there's a number of tasks pending for her to get done. Now, moving along to another uh, aspect of this program. Uh, by the way, if there's any questions, you can put them into the question box and Manish will 
uh, you know, who's helping me with this uh, webinar will be able to answer them. So feel free. Also, of course, you can arrange a demo, one-on-one -on -one demo with us after the webinar. We'd be very glad to show you it in detail and talk about your onboarding process, user access requirements, and also we'd be glad to uh, answer any questions or, or whatever have. We'll also have a recording available at the end of it too. And meanwhile, back to what we were doing here. So there's also a uh, change request, departing staff request. So change request means changing the access that this person has uh, to the system. So we'd have to choose who it is. I mean, we get pick on Susan, and she has any access yet, so let's not do that one. Let's do, let's take me on this one. So if I wanted to change the access I had here uh, to certain programs, effective, say, next Monday, I'm in the IT department, and I'm an IT administrator, and it's going to uh, fill in this information, and then, again, approval, and then what applications I want to change and how I want to change them which ones are added, which ones are deleted, and it would have to be approved and uh, before it can be put into action. Once it's, once it's, once it's uh, put in, like here's a change request that's put in and it's completed, a series of, a series of, again, a series of tasks are created that are related to that change request. So this is Michael Jordan, he has a change request, his manager is James Restivo, and they're, they're removing or changing some access to these three applications for this person. One's been done, and two have not been done yet, and we can see what that actual is. That task, remove access for him to that. So uh, if that's not done in a certain amount of time, we can alert this person here, Scott Restivo, and say, hey, why haven't you got this done? Maybe one day before the due date, two days before, 30 days before, whatever, whatever time we want to alert can go out and keep track of those tasks uh, for that change request. And the same idea with offboarding here. If we have an offboarding, uh, it seems like Michael Jordan's getting picked on a little here, but there's some offboarding uh, tasks going on here also that need to be completed in order for the offboarding to be truly, truly done. In this case, here's one that has more, more express version of the offboarding. In this case, it'd be remove all these or take care of all these different tasks when you're offboarding someone. So these, all the different tasks that are generated as part of the onboarding change request or midboarding and offboarding are configurable in the utilities we have and in our list and in our application administration and all that. So it would be very, very customizable to that. You can also see what users are, are, are here. Now they, this, this is a list of people who have been onboarded. And what uh, what role they have, where they what the IT department is, and um, what applications they have access to, right here. You know what what department, where they're located. So there, there's that list. Now I'll go a little on the back end here and show more of that uh, situation. So let's go here and start to talk a little bit about the configuration options. You can enable roles ad hoc application access, default applications, who the approver is, application management, what applications are here. This can all be set up in the application list as to what application and what what permissions are in that application. So here's, here's some of the applications and for instance QuickBooks here has one of uh, permissions of administrator, finance and read. So when you uh, bring someone on board, they can be given any one of those permissions or none of those. So you can set up all your applications here. It's very easy to add a new application and just put the title permissions and who, who the owner is in the sense of who's responsible for it. Not actually own the application, but own it in the sense of responsible for, for that. Uh, how about go to meeting and there's presenter and then there's uh, attendee, you know, something like that. The presenter, no, organizer is the word they use, organizer. So you know we can we can create these things very easily in here and have a, a new a new uh, application in with a couple different different uh, permissions on it quite easily. Go to meeting as organizer and presenter. And then I can go here to roles, the different roles in the organization. There could be network administrator, for example. 
and that network administrator would have these applications assigned to it. So I'll say, well, okay, go to meeting is something that we want to give the person the right to. Here, uh, where is it? Go to meeting, onboarding, go go to meeting. Oh, I know what it is. I have to I have to go here to configuration and uh, manage the applications and update update permission data and then go here. But I mean, these are just simple configurations that allow it to uh, be be that much uh, flexible with how easy it is to add and remove. So you now go to meetings right here and I'll make this person able to be an organizer. So whenever a, a new IT administrator, a, a new employee comes in and is given the role in the IT department of network administrator, they will by default get this permission as part of their new hire request. So that's how you can set up roles and employ and roles and application permissions to be synchronized and, and in, in tune with each other. So it's quite easy to modify that aspect of the program. So what what I'm hoping to show you here is kind of a light light uh, introduction to this application and its capabilities, the way the UI has many interesting features that make it easy to use, the way this configuration on the back end. And the reality is that given the complexity and the idiosyncratic nature of onboarding, offboarding, and midboarding, we have tried to build as much as possible into this program the flexibility and capabilities that are needed to truly serve that purpose, again, with the higher goal here that we talked about earlier, of streamlining and simplifying the onboarding process in order that the employee, the new employee can join the company and feel and be part of it and, and contributing to the organization goals as quickly as possible. And as I, as I understand this and read more about it, uh, and you know, this is a common, common knowledge in the industry, is that in that first 90 days, it's critical to get the employee uh, engaged and embedded and working and the smoother the transition is from in, during the hiring process the more likely that person is to stick around and feel comfortable in, in part of the firm. Now it's not just this onboarding application, there's a lot of other activities involved like training and certifications and things, but having a process like this in place versus email spreadsheets or paper definitely facilitates that goal of streamlining and simplifying the process and making new hire come on board, ready to go to work, ready to be productive, ready to, to contribute to the overall focus of the organization, whether it's delivering member services or it's a government agency or whether it's a profit-making corporation, whatever. We want to bring the people on and get them up and going uh, as quickly and efficiently as possible. And that requires that we have these number of tasks done whether it's the HR task, the finance task, the IT task is a big one, facilities task, all managed uh, into this, this uh, framework that we have here. Now, there's a lot of more things to this program. I don't know if there's any questions come up. Manish, are you getting questions here? Documentation of tasks and of dependencies? Yeah, yeah, they can. Okay. One person is asking if tasks do not tasks do not have dependencies, can they be done out of order as shown on the screen? Yes, you can. If they do not have dependencies, you can now do any one of these tasks at any time you want. It does not have to be Salesforce, then PeopleSoft, then this and this. It's all. If it was dependent, it would not show up here. Once it shows up here, it's ready to be. It's it, the indication is that this is ready. This task is ready to be accomplished or completed or you know tended to in some manner. And, uh, if it, and if there are dependencies, other dependencies on it, say you can't do finance, so there might be, let's say there's three finance tasks, well you can't do that until you do this, or maybe three HR tasks, you can't do the I-9 until you do the W-4, I don't know what reason, or you can't do the insurance form until you do the W-4. More likely you can't do payroll until you do the W-4, it's actually more likely how it works. So th those tasks would be, those dependencies could be shown up here, so once that finance task, or the W-4 submission task is done, then it would uh, allow the payroll task to take place. So those kind of future dependencies can be there. Is there a way to require approval by certain individuals before releasing the task to be performed? So in the task itself, you'd want approval of this. 
Uh, our approval is working on the onboarding in general so that the onboarding would uh, is approved that you can go forward with it and the person who reviews the onboarding you know request would approve the applications that are you know going to be assigned to that person and what permissions I suppose there could be say you want to give them Oracle database permission I don't know some financial or ERP system but the IT manager says yes give them that but the ERP administrator might say well wait a minute I have to approve that so we, probably, we could build that in it's not in here in this program as it is in this demo but having each task be requiring approval before uh, it's done would be adding simply the approval capabilities to this task itself as an as an atomized kind of function, you know, in particular itemized or atomized function. Okay. For pricing and cost and pricing structure, we'll we'll contact you individually on that. Uh, that's something that we won't probably address in this in this. Uh, webinar itself. Uh, let's see. And somebody's asking for templates of workflows. Well, yeah, that's an interesting question. That's an interesting question about templates of workflows. We have found that what when we are doing workflows and whether you're doing any kind of uh, workflow in SharePoint, people have different tools they like to use. Visio, Balsam IQ, Balsamic, you know, Balsam IQ. Uh, sometimes they map it out in in, in a PowerPoint. You know, all kinds of different ways of generating these 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 uh, workflows uh, so we don't have a tool a specific tool but there are a lot out there that do it uh, as far as having templates we don't have those but that's a good idea maybe we could put a few templates or suggestions of tools to use good good question on that and uh, if the task is not completed by its due date you can send oh certainly that's a very important part of our program is that there's alerting either on the due date or any number of days before it that this this task uh, is coming due and needs to be completed and so the reminder will go out to this in this case Crow admin or, or whomever in order to uh, remind them that this task needs to be completed by this due date and then if it goes overdue uh, again those kind of persistent reminders can go out and eventually you'd see it here uh, status would be overdue and then you would go in and uh, take take care of it. You know, there's there's some ways to take care of it. Okay. Uh, approval of the cost of the document. Somebody's asking about documentation. Yeah, we have some documentation for it. That's right. Uh, what is the oldest microphone that's compatible with? Okay. This program is compatible. It work, runs on top of SharePoint 2013, 2016, and Office 365. We have not built this for SharePoint 2010. We have built this for SharePoint 2013 and 2016 using web parts and full trust solutions, which we developed. I'll make a point here that Crow Canyon developed all those web parts. We don't use third-party tools for this. We don't go to other third-party providers and run into issues with support and upgrades and all that. All this is completely embraced and developed and modified and upgraded by Crow Canyon. Uh, we have what we call, well, it's called the Nitro application service layer, that's Crow Canyon's unique special sauce, a secret sauce or something, I don't know, that is that empowers up SharePoint and Office 365. Now in Office 365, let me make this point, all those web all those parts are not web parts, they're apps and add-ins that we created specifically for the Office 365 environment native to Office 365. There are no full trust solutions, sandbox solutions, anything like that, old school stuff that's used on on-premises. It's all Office 365 and fully compatible with the um, guidelines given out by Microsoft to for you know ISVs for developers to follow in order to develop on top of the Office 365 platform. Now another thing that I can bring in here it might not have occurred to you is integration with other systems. So you know we can integrate with other databases, ERPs, HR systems, uh, ticketing systems, things like that can all be uh, integrated with with this. All our programs are very much that way. That help desk can integrate with assets and work orders with equipment and purchasing and contracts can all be involved. So this can be part of a larger art HR departmental uh, portal or departmental activity. 
uh, what people are calling these days the digital workplace, one of those buzzwords that's making the circulation these days. Uh, but what people say, they can talk all day about the digital workplace. Crow Canyon provides the tools that actually do it, the building blocks of the digital workplace. This is what we do. And if somebody else can call it a digital workplace and grandstand about that, but the reality is that that means nothing unless you have the actual applications and tools under it that provide the, the, the work of the workplace. Um, there. So you could call this part of a digital workplace. Office 365 is a digital workplace and this would be embedded in there uh, if you're using Office 365 or SharePoint also embedded in that SharePoint environment. Okay, Okay. we're getting a lot of questions now that I went off on my little rant there. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. Oldest, what, the tools will manage tasks outside of the tool, but yes. The, the, the tool manages the task to be executed, but does not execute the task directly. Like I had to go to Active Directory to do the Active Directory creation. You'd have to go to the application of Salesforce or go to meeting and give that actual application access to that person. We don't, we, you know, be really complicated if you started to say from this task, push a button and that's going to grant this access over there. You'd have to open up the API to each one of those uh, applications and do it. There could be some automation brought in here, particularly if it applies to the SharePoint world. Um, if you want to grant SharePoint to, uh, permissions to a SharePoint site, for example, or Office 365 site, you know, within that world. And if we really thought about it, I'm sure we could come up with all kinds of ways to, to do these more complex things. Well, of course, like, you know, we're not going to fill out the W4 for the person or the I sign, of course, but some things that are application related or SharePoint and Office 365 related, perhaps we could build into the program or put a workflow on there that does it, but in the, currently we don't, we require the uh, task to be done by the person who is assigned to. Go to Active Directory and do this. Go to that application and do that. Go to the payroll and do that. Okay. Yeah, it manages the pan, kind of manages the workflow. Overall example, it does not provision application security. It creates tasks for others to approve and provision it. That's right, and that way, in that way, it facilitates the whole process. What is going on when you use email spreadsheets or paper forms? There is no overarching facilitation of the process, and that's what we're bringing here to automate and to, as we say, drive efficiency and productivity. You know these. The, the business words we always like to use. But the idea is that we're driving productivity, efficiency, making things smoother. But the goal is, the, the purpose is to, you know, make the person, the, help the person who's coming on board engage and be productive as soon as possible in the organization and just, just happier and better. I mean, you know, if you go to a job and things aren't there and aren't ready, you, you feel like, oh, you know, this is not so great. You get kind of maybe initial, like, not great feeling about the company, uh, at least until, you know, you go out to the company party or something. But other than that, it's uh, good to have everything set up beforehand and have the person welcome and, you know, uh, at least if not a, you know, grand, wel you know, a, a band welcome him and playing welcome to our company, at least have his access set up and his desktop and everything else ready for, for him or her to join the organization. I think that's, that's a reasonable goal. Um, and it can be achieved, and this helps achieve it. Okay, what else? Facilities, it facilitates, yes, a set of APIs, uh, in a sense that Office 365 has capabilities under the scenes. Now, it, when we get more technical talk about APIs, we can get another conversation going, and we'd like to have that, because we can introduce you to the workflow manager, which is not an API per se, but it's like an API where you go to our workflow manager and you can tweak and modify and set up workflows that are particular to your uh, functionality and the processing that you go through there. The workflow manager that we have as part of our Nitro layer is very powerful with many, many capabilities. I didn't expose that here because I didn't want to confuse and introduce another level of, of engagement and involvement here that uh, might be, might be uh, you know, more technical orientation, but we certainly could go into that individually with people. And we, I, hey, that's what we do. We're, we we build these applications. We love to show them off. Uh, you know, we're we're more technicians than marketers here, and we build applications that work, and build the building blocks of the org, of the digital workplace, as they say. 
and we want functionality, and so any, any conversation like that, we're glad, very glad to have. Slides and presentation will be available, and it's been recorded. Okay. I might have uh, covered just about any other any questions, but I can certainly, you know, I'm respectful of people's time. We're coming up on the hour, but anytime anybody who wants a one-on-one -on -one demo or to discuss even just your onboarding needs, offboarding needs, we're really glad to do that. Uh, have that conversation, go into detail, whether it's technical or administrative detail how it's configured, no problem there. And we also um, will provide a set of contact information. Our, admittedly, since we're technicians, not so much marketers, our website is not as elaborate. We're working on it. Believe me, we're working on making the website better. Uh, well, we don't, the material there is, you know, I think it needs a little bit of amplification in terms of data sheets and those kind of things, particularly for onboarding. But we focus more on de developing the applications and providing the functionality than, than uh, just marketing and not having the, the uh, capabilities in the program itself. So, so we'll, ha we'll, get, we'll, get, we'll get that up there. So what I'm saying is it's good to come to us directly and talk to us directly to get the full story about the, these applications, whether it's the onboarding one or the other ones that I mentioned here in our program. So let me get that uh, slides up again here. Slideshow from current slide, I think. Here we go. Display demo onboarding. Okay, we already did that. Questions, we went through. <laughs> some, some stay in touch slides here. Oh, we have a, the blog is quite interesting these days. We're doing a lot of articles in the blog and white papers and things. And the other thing that's not mentioned here, we're going to a number of shows. We have a number of events. We're going to Austin, SharePoint TechCon, uh, a, week from, a week from Monday it starts. We're going to the SharePoint DC Fest down in mid-April, April 19th, 20th, around that time frame. Omaha SharePoint Saturday, Twin Cities SharePoint Saturday, uh, another SP Fest in the end of in Denver at the end of May, a New York City SharePoint Saturday at the end of July, Seattle. So any of those, if, if you happen to attend any of those, we really just come right up to us and we'll talk about any of these applications, any needs you have there to do that. So I'd like to thank everyone for attending, and hopefully you'll stay in touch. We'll we'll send out some information at the end of this, uh, you know, some uh, webinar recording or some other information about it. But feel free to contact me or sales at crowcanyon.com, and we'll be or call the phone number, whatever works. Check us out, Twitter, follow us on Twitter, and uh, if you come to show, see us at shows, and we'll be glad to help you get your onboarding on track, all right? Okay, thank you very much and hope to hear from you soon.